So the great one wins the lag and off he goes. Well, we've seen it on the opening two days, haven't we, Phil? You know, Veronica's going to get her chances. I don't see why things are going to change now off the break shot. And just as I say that, Ralph comes up dry. And I think there's a combo on for Veronica, so... Yeah, the three ball will... I believe it will pot. Even if it's going into that left jaw, she may be able to hit it on the far left-hand side of the one. That might throw it over a little. She's got the best view in the house. Yeah, that's a job well done. There was enough gap there, so she could make the combination. Big on the loser's side, of course. This is a race to eight. She's very deliberate and hurried and flustered. Yeah, I've watched a few of her matches and that is a prime example of what I was just about to say. She's a very, very tidy player, but I think now and again her speed control is not quite there. She seems to over hit and under hit a lot of shots, so the pot inside of it's there and playing the, the correct shot looks fine, but she's landed, well, in the worst position possible now. She's probably going to have to just roll this in and play safe on the five or... Yeah, I think she's going to have to. Yeah, potting the four is no certainty, but... Going from four to five, that would be a real stretch. Almost impossible. Playing safe now. Yeah, she played the cross bank. And that's not the end of the world because Ralph's going to have to come with a beauty to get back on this purple five. I know it says a race to nine on the screen, but it is a race to eight, folks. All losers' matches are a race to eight. If you're just tuning in, we say losers because this is a double elimination tournament. 256 players have started. We play double elimination down to the final 64. If you win three matches without losing, you're through to the 64. And then the 32 players that have not lost in this event will be drawn against the 32 players that come through who have lost one. Sounds complicated, but it isn't. A Joshua filler type player or a youthful player, an attacking player, would have a go at potting this and ripping it straight back for the five, but that is just so hard and that's not really what Ralph Suke's game is about. He's more about percentage play. But he tried to power it through and it was never going to be easy that 
So now Veronica's back at the table and she's got a nice angle here. She can pot this ball and go in between the black ball and the brown ball. Playing for the purple five. Lost the cue ball, but now this is a better shot for Veronica. Needs to keep rolling to be in plum position. She's going to have to float this one a little soft. Cue ball's going to be coming off the top rail and back down in a similar line. Looks like she's going to draw it two rails. It's okay. That's more than okay. In fact, it's perfect. She's in perfect position now. Doesn't matter who you are, does it, Phil? It's always nice to win that first rack. Absolutely. She's got the poise, I think, to be able to compete here. Never gets out of her own rhythm. It's a rhythm she establishes and sticks to rigidly. Regardless of the opponent, regardless of the occasion. Regardless of the stage, which in this case is centre stage. There you go. First rack to Ivanovskaya. She started off today over on the other side of the arena, actually, on another of our streaming tables, table two, where she beat... Tiberiu, Iorgulescu from Romania, 9-3. Then they had a very tough match. Second up against Mika Immonen, former World 9-ball and US Open champion. Ivanov Sky lost that one, 9-3. So hence, both of these two have won one, lost one records. And that's why they're involved on the loss side against each other. All of the matches being played now. They are one loss side of the draw. And so at the end of this evening, quite a few ladies and gentlemen will be exiting. Gonna be a dry break for Veronica. And I think Ralph is straight in on this one ball. Pink four ball is, is a concern for Ralph as well. He's got to try and get from that red three ball over to the pink four. That's going to be the key section to this rack. I think newer fans to nine ball pool might not be fully acquainted with just what a, a giant of the game Ralph Suke has been. 
53 years of age now. He turns 54 in November. He's won over 200 tournaments. <laughs> 23 Euro Tour titles. He's won 20 European championships in different disciplines. 12 German championships. And he's won both the WPA World 8-Ball Championship in 2008 and the World 9-Ball Championship in 1996. And I think what's most appropriate, considering where we are, Carl, in 1997, after that 9-Ball Championship triumph, he received the Silver Laurel Leaf, which is the highest official distinction awarded to sports people by Germany. It was presented by then German President Roman Herzog. Yeah, Ralph Suke, legend in the world of pool and even now at 53, he still does everything right, gives himself the best chance, you know, he's, he works out still, he's off and running and trying to eat the correct things and he does everything how how things should be done. And we must also say that he's winning is not a thing of the past. He won the European 8-Ball Championship this year. What a great achievement that was. Playing the bank in the right centre. He's going to stun the cue ball into the purple. But he's missed the bank and he's missed the purple. What's he left? He's left a pot into the top corner for Veronica. Skyer is definitely the underdog, of course, but she's not going to be one of those underdogs who melt in the face of reputation. Suke will have to earn this. He will, because that's a good sign. That went in clean. That was awkward. Cue ball was on the rail. This is what she's got to do good now when she's got this opportunity, this very opportunity now where the balls are all sat there. You know, if you want to, if you want to beat Ralph Suke or at least push him close, you have to simply take these finishes and speed seems to have got her stuck a little bit there. She needs a bit of an angle to come down. She's down quick, so it must be okay. Yeah, it is okay, and this is now perfect. She's got the right angle just to run round off a rail or two. She would like the cue ball to have been a little bit more central to the table, just so this is guaranteed. Because queuing off the rail, you never know. But it's there, it's 2-0. Excellent stuff. Excellent. Interesting backstory, Veronica Ivanovskaya. She was born in St. Petersburg, Russia. Eldest child of a family of Russian immigrants who moved here to Germany when she was quite young. Family actually moved to Hanover. At the age of eight, she took a pool. And when she first started playing, she wasn't tall enough to reach the table. So she used to stand on a crate 
in order to play the shots. She's now a German citizen, of course, representing her country proudly. In 2018, she was the European Women's Able Champion. 27 years of age. I've seen her. When she's in the spotlight like this, she's no shrinking violet. She isn't afraid of reputation or indeed occasion. No, and the other thing to take note of, which we've alluded to at the start of this match, it is not a race to nine now. It's a race to eight. And I know that's only one rack, but it just feels a lot shorter. It feels a shorter sprint as the one ball goes to the top rail. Right. She's spotted the ball, so she's still at the table. Now, Jamie Lee this round, I'll give you some of the latest scores around the arena as the day winding down but still plenty of contests going on not all 24 tables are being used right now but a good proportion of them are sensible shot Using the three to hold the, uh, the one ball there, sorry, at the top end of the table. Just to get in distance, she, she will have known she couldn't have snookered Ralph, so just giving him the table back. He's got something to think about, he's two down. Table two, which is going on right now. Yes, so to Camino holds a six-five lead over Stefan Tabor from Germany. He's rather playing off the left edge. He is. He's using the six ball as a blocker. He's done well, but the one ball down. Maybe a little bit too close to the corner. Oh, it's a good shot. Very good shot indeed. At least he's making Barack play something. Not sure how adapted she is with the short flick. Going air bump. She's trying to jump over the six, pop the one. She'll come close to this. The one's near the pocket. There you can see striking down the cue ball. She's missed it by a long way. Was it finished? Could have been worse. Ralph can't play his ball, so we can chuck that down. There's a fluke. A fluke safe. She might be in a bit of trouble after this shot, mine, but at least Ralph can't pot it. You know, Suke, the way he plays pool is the way he conducts his life. He's so precise, measured, prepared, meticulous.
And this time, a pot is on. Yeah, it was good safety from Ralph. It was quite an easy one, but you still got to get the pace right on them safety shots, which he did. Over the years, Cole, you must have had quite a few battles with Ralph. I know you were teammates on the same European Moscone Cup team. As an opponent, though, he must be, and certainly 10, 15 years ago, was incredibly formidable to beat yeah you always knew when when you was due to play him you you had to win the match he wasn't going to lie down he's not changed at all he still plays with the same pace often you 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 can play players where the demeanor changes depending on the score but doesn't we ralph he won't be happy with this shot but he will still play the same pace and he he won't like lose won't lose his rag or get angry. He'll just keep battling along and fighting. And yeah, I've had many a battle with Ralph over the years. Some good, some bad. Just got the impression on that last shot he was a little off balance maybe playing it and dug into the wide too much, hence it didn't make the journey. Always been methodical, so for him, undoubtedly the shot clock has been a hindrance. Feels more free in this kind of environment where he can set his own pace. He's a good pot, just chasing the positional play though, isn't he? He was trying to come round off three rails for the pink in the top right. Doesn't look like there's a pot available here. So it's going to have to be a set.
we didn't quite see the first three racks going over to Team Veronica, did we? Ralph's got his work cut out now in this match. He's looking good. Good indeed. Veronica Ivanovskaya leads the great Ralph Suke by three racks to zero. And your assumption, Carl, which I think is bang on about the fact that Suke will not get frustrated or flustered, I think that will serve him well. Because right now, a lot of players would be getting frustrated and flustered and deeply concerned that they were on the way out of the tournament. Yeah, the, the only thing is Ralph had a chance in that rack, didn't he? And he ended up making a mess of it. Lost the cue ball position a couple of times, and that's what has ended up costing in the third rack. By the way, we were talking about that World Championship being here at Koningsventer in Germany in 93. The very first WPA World Nine Ball Championship was hosted by Germany in 1990 in Bergheim. And who won it? Another great of the game, Earl Strickland, beating Jeff Carter in the final. Ralph Suke's World Championship win in terms of nine ball came in 1996 in October of that year in Sweden. He beat a Swede, actually, in the final, Tom Storm, 11-1. Can Veronica find something on the break? She cannot. But at least she hasn't left Ralph a shot. Only 10 matches left in play now out there in the arena. And there's a, a powerful possibility this could be the last on. On table two, Janus Suter Camino was 7 5 up on Taif and Tabor, but the, the German has pulled back a rack. He won the 13th, so trails only 7 6. Pablo Garcia Lager and James Telfer of GB, they're locked together at 7-7. Seven, seven. Ralph played the push, Veronica has the option. With the seven and the nine tied, tied up, if there isn't an obvious safety, I'll just put Ralph back. He's gotta come with the shots, not Veronica. She's the one that's 3-0 up. She has put Ralph back. Ralph jacked up. not good but the push out Ralph played where he tied the brown seven and the nine up and the six that's his insurance policy but all I will say is if she can pot this and then she can pot the two and the three she can leave the cue ball near the three that kind of area and then she could pot that pink four and go into the brown seven because she would stay on the purple five so this is a big shot coming up Stayed over the pocket. Didn't cue that too bad. But at least she's hooked Ralph. I think Joshua Filler were just walking across the arena then. I think he's going to 
take himself a seat and watch this match. I was very impressed with Joshua winning that match. It's not very nice when you're out in that kind of environment and you know most of the people watching want you to lose. Quite a simple jump shot from Ralph Suke. The kiss was a treat. Yeah, now we're going to see Ralph possibly play what I was suggesting or what Verona could have been playing. So it's a big moment for Ralph. This. He's not guaranteed where the balls are going to come out, but he's got to attack the table, you feel. There are the fillers, Joshua and Pia. They will do battle if you're just joining us. They will do battle tomorrow in the winner's qualification round. Yes, you're on camera. Who is going to win the battle of the fillers tomorrow? That is going to be a classic. What a weird feeling. Playing your wife in winner's qualification round. Knowing that we all want wife to win, of course. A few years ago in the World Cup of Snooker, we had a, a dynamic, not like that, but something similar. Norway uh, was represented by husband and wife, Kurt and Anita Mafflin. But of course, they were pooling their resources, not playing against each other. Is Ralph going to send the cue ball over towards the cluster? He knows the five is over a pocket or near a pocket. Yep, that's the shot he's played. That's what I was talking about. You're never quite sure how they're going to come out. And they haven't come out great, it has to be said. He was trying to move the seven and the nine out of the way. He's got work to do. This is a, a rhetorical question because no one will ever know the answer, but I wonder how many racks over the years Ralph Zucker has played incorporating practice as well. It would be an astronomical figure. I bet Michael McMullen knows the answer. You know what he's like. Yeah, I bet that number... He's a scary number. This is a scary shot. He's shooting it up into the top left. He's missed it. He's missed it. He never looked in all the way there. He didn't quite get good on it, did he? What a chance for Veronica. Just mopping up the pieces. Big shot coming up for V. Did you notice as he left the table? This is the most animated you're ever going to see, Ralph Suke. Disgusted. Trying to keep it all in. Trying to remain disciplined. But he must be worried now. She needs a good positional shot here, though, because this is a little awkward. wonder what angle she's got on this brown seven. Can she draw straight back? But once the arm gets a bit tight at the back, it's easy to put too much spin into the cue ball. And because of that, often you don't hit it hard enough and land a bit short. Oh, that's perfect. That is perfect. Well, these racks, Phil, keep ticking on, don't they? This is to go 4-0 up. Well, in terms of a storyline, we might have reserved the best till last today. I cannot imagine that Veronica Ivanovskaya is going to miss the nine ball here. And no doubter. 
she is halfway to victory over the great Ralph Suke. Ivanovskaya leads by four acts to zero. And we do know who the winner of this match will take on next on the loser side. It will be Jonas Suto Camino of Spain, who just a few moments ago over on table two defeated Tefun Tabar 8-6. So that's the end of play over on table two today. But we'll be back tomorrow, of course, on the Matrim Pool YouTube channel from the start of play at 10 a.m. local time here in Germany. Other scores, Hector, Ivan Luna, Iglesias and Benjamin Belhassen are Hill Hill, 7-7. Seven, seven. Bessar Spahiu, also on the hill, leading Cyril Ledoux from France, 7-3, the Albanian. Another Frenchman, Vincent Facke, he's been around for years. He's 6-5 up on Emir Sasena from Turkey. Karl Knaderberg from Estonia, he's 6-5 up on Emil Gangflot of Norway. Eric Kohler of Germany, 4-3 up on Vincent Gomez. And finally, Nicholas Doer from right here in Germany leads Jani Sikonen, 6-4. Sikonen eliminated a former professional snooker player, Eden Shirav, yesterday. You've done well there, Phil, rattling them names off. Rather you than me. There was a Greek player who I've avoided because I just couldn't work out what his name was. He's not playing at the moment, so I'm OK. I'm in the clear until tomorrow. I'm going to go away and practice. Now, you know, earlier on, just before the start of this match, I went downstairs and had a chat with Pia and Josh Filler. As you might imagine, Carl, they were in top spirits. It really is a, a unique situation we're going to have here tomorrow, husband and wife doing battle, and not just in any old match, but also in the, the winner's qualification. Pia, Josh, ah, here what is the interview. An achievement to get to play each other on the winner's side to boot. You must be delighted. Yeah, I'm super excited. I really wanted to play this guy in this tournament. So uh, I was fighting hard to get here. I'm finally here and uh, I can't wait. <laughs> Is this a first? I mean, on the big stage, yeah. We played a couple of times, of course, in the practice sessions, but in a couple of German, I mean, German tournaments, we played each other, each other. But that match was kind of almost in jeopardy because I was when I knew she, she was winning, uh, I was eight for down and uh, yeah, I was I was more nervous than, nervous than because I, we wanted pl to play each other, yeah. And uh, yeah, I gave my best and luckily I won in the end. You've played Rafael a lot when you were juniors. Yep. Obviously he's a very good player. Uh, someone said that he had a pretty good record against you as a junior. So when you were 8-4 down, you must have been fearing the worst. Yeah, of course. I mean, I was 6-1 uh, down, 8-4. And yeah, I know him since I'm, I'm a child. We played in the youth tournaments. Uh, I think uh, we, we kind of break even with the matches we played. Um, he won a couple of finals against me, I won a couple of fin finals against him and uh, it was a great match. I mean the atmosphere was just crazy because uh, he's playing in his home crowd. He's coming from here and uh, yeah, I just enjoyed it. I felt like Moscone Cup. Of, when he made the nine balls, they were, they were nuts. So I really, really enjoyed it. It was a great match. I got the luck in the end of my side here in the beginning, so it's also okay. Um, I'm just super delighted that I'm through. So what about the preparation tomorrow? Will it be any different from a normal match? <laughs> no, I don't think so. We're just doing business as usual. And uh, I mean, it's no secret he's the love of my life. But tomorrow he's going to be my biggest rival for 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Be shorter. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, we'll see. <laughs> obviously you're going to be sent to stage as well. It's going to be a worldwide audience. If you get off to a good start, he's going to be under a lot of pressure. <laughs> well, to be honest, I think my odds to beat this guy is around, I don't know, maybe 2%, but I'm going to give it all. I'm trying to play my best because I'm feeling quite comfortable and was playing pr pretty good today. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Well, we're really looking forward to the match. It should be absolutely intriguing. It's a totally different dynamic to what we normally have. Best of luck to both of you. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much. <laughs> a filler will win. Oh, nice one. <laughs> that was great fun, wasn't it?
So there they were sharing a microphone. Tomorrow they'll be sharing a table. And of course, because it's on the, the winner's side, Carl, it will be a race to nine. Of course, the matches we are now watching, they're dwindling down to six in number, currently being played. It's a race to eight on the loser's side. And that means Veronica Ivanovskaya is halfway to beating Ralph Suke. What a story brewing. That was actually a bit of a mishit. She didn't hit the one ball as full as she intended. That's why the cue ball sort of squirted down near this corner pocket. But she still made the one ball, actually, so maybe... Maybe you have to hit that one ball as a little thinner than I first imagined. Anyway, back to the rack. She can't pot a ball here, can she? So, is there a safety shot available? What she's got to try and do here, she's going to be getting a little bit excited. She's 4-0 up against the Kaiser. At some point, the Kaiser might have been one of her favourite players growing up. You never know. But she's got to stay in the moment. She's got to think clearly because Ralph's under the gun here. He's under severe pressure. So she's not going to give it to Ralph. She's got to make him work for it. Don't play silly safeties. Make Ralph do all the tough shots. I also think it's important that while she shouldn't be hurried, don't get bogged down either. Don't allow too much negativity to creep into the mind, into the thought process. Well, good in one sense, bad in another. Yeah, I don't believe she was playing the six ball there. I don't know if she was trying to cut the two on the five. I'm not really sure, but that was kind of what I was... Yeah, she definitely wasn't playing the six there. This is what I was kind of getting at. Don't get lost in the moment, Veronica. Stay, stay patient. Don't give Ralph something easy. Now she's got a kick at the two ball. She's going to need a little bit of luck. Unless, can she get the cue ball off the blue two into the five? It's hard to tell from this angle. Maybe not. Yeah, she's going to leave Ralph in now. Ralph can pop the purple five off this blue two. For a moment there, I thought the eight ball might be blocking the two, but the cue ball had just enough speed to get past the eight. This was the gift Ralph Suke has been hoping would come, really. 
He's looked a little bit out of sorts. They are going to be playing a lone furrow soon. Only five matches out there now. And three of those are very close to completion. Mind you, the amount of finals that Ralph's been involved in, he will be entirely accustomed to a, a one-table setup, which is effectively what it will be. Yeah, Ralph will keep doing what he does. Walks around, checks the angle, the potting angle of every shot, no matter how easy it is. That's his style of play. And I suppose when you fall down in the race to eight, well, you've got to do that more than ever because he's got a, got a big fight back on his hands, but this is the start. Yeah, from Ralph, suitcase perspective, that is one down, a possible seven to go. He trails Veronica Ivanovskaya by four acts to one. Other scores, Eric Kohler, 5-3 up on Vincent Gomez. Carl, uh, Carl Kanadeberg, he's 7-6 up on Emil Gangflot, so just one rack away from victory, the Estonian. Same for Vincent Fake over Emir Sasena from Turkey, 7-5 for Thake, and it's 6-6 six, six on a table just below us, actually, here in our commentary position, table 25. 6-6, six, six, Nicholas Doer and Yanni Sikanen. Well, what a day it's been, and of course, the way these tournaments work, the excitement and the pressure and the stakes just crank up day on day tomorrow. Day three should be intriguing. Well, the nine ball went in the vicinity of a pocket there, although didn't exactly threaten. And while the one ball is in, look at the two being very rude in terms of obstructing Ralph Suge's path to the two.
successful lead. We're always on the lookout for potential turning points. And that has got all of the trademarks of a turning point. Yeah, I'm with you, Phil. That was a big moment. That I feel she should have played it in the side and just got the cue ball off two rails in the centre of the table. That would have been ideal for the six ball. That's all Ralph could do because of where the eight was. He just had to give himself a shot on this six. Good shot there. It was a little thin one. Cue ball off two rails. And now Ralph. He's going to steal this rack. And with you, Phil. I think that is the big moment in this match. And the point is, Carl, big moments in racks, in matches, can become very big moments in a tournament as a whole. Who knows down the line? The prevailing emotion for Ralph Suke when the nine ball goes in will be one of gratitude and relief. The nine ball does go in. The it was 4-0, now it's 4-2. But really, everyone here knows it should have been 5-1, including Veronica Ivanovskaya. The ball she missed wasn't a good one at all, was it? So, Carl, what's the best way of getting over a miss when you know you should have potted it? Yeah, it's the old cliche, you just got to forget about it. It is the past, but there's just something when you're involved in a match. And it's a big match, you know, it's on the stream table. There'll be a lot of people watching this game. You know, she's playing the Kaiser, Ralph Suke. And she'll be sat there thinking, I should be 5-1 up. But she isn't, she's 4-2. So you've got to think positive. She's still 4-2 up. And I think... And I know we've, we keep harping on about this, but with this break rule, you know, no one's really going to run a three or a four. Here now, cue ball's getting kicked around the table. So hard to control the cue ball. Ralph, no shot on the one ball. So Veronica will be back. Yeah, in rack six, Suke broke on.
not thought about it. Also, the cue ball could have been quite cosy up to the seven. It stopped just in time to make Suke have some kind of free queuing. Yeah, it's not ideal, this, is it? Because that three doesn't go up into the top corner. So how does he get high above the three from there? I don't think... I don't think he can. Yeah, the previous shot, I think that was quite thin, the pot on the one, so... That's why he's lost the cue ball. And he's got to be careful that cue doesn't touch the seven ball. That's good thinking. He's played for the bank. He's already missed the bank early on in this match. It was on the four ball. This one is a little easier. Ralph Suke smells blood. But he's missed a bank. At this level, then banks should go, really. They are more than, more than makeable. He'll be furious with himself. What is he left? Yeah, that bank is far more than 50-50. Maybe even 75-25, Kamal, would you say? Yeah, at this level, you know, Ralph knows. He knows that was a, a good chance. Veronica's on the 50-yard line, though. She's got to come with a shot. And probably rightly so, after that last rep, where she made the mistake. She's trying to pot it in the corner and go through the gap of two, maybe three rails. Not easy. Didn't threaten the pocket. Maybe she's still rattled about missing a, a much easier pot in rack six. Can tell you quickly, Vincent Fake, he and Ralph Suko were born three weeks apart in 1968, both very much veterans. Vincent Fake, the only Frenchman to represent his country in the Moscone Cup. Well, he's through. He's just won 8-6 against Amir. Sesencia of Turkey. Big shot coming up. That's why Ralph has took a step back. He knows. Well, not the most convincing strike, was it? But it went in nevertheless. Just lost the cue ball again there as Ralph. That's fine if he can just drop this in the, the centre pocket, but I believe he was playing for the, the bottom right. And although the, the green six ball is in the vicinity of the centre pocket, these jaws, the way they cut, they have to be treated with the utmost respect, don't they? How thin is this shot? Oh, he's lost the cue ball there, was Ralph. He can still pot it in the top left, but I think he was trying to slide a bit further over and play play this ball in the top right, to be honest. Adding the extension on the cue rather than using the bridge. It's a funny one, isn't it, Phil? You know, Veronica's four up. She looks all right in the balls. Things are going well. Why Why is it something always happens and then they just kind of slide off the pace a little bit to let their opponent back in? 
well they tense up because of the enormity of what they stand to achieve. Yes, Ivana Skara has won European title. She's competed and won matches on TV before, but I think for her to to beat Raul Suke in this environment, in this venue, that would be maybe not the most important win of her career, but the most high profile. And now the Kaiser is starting to rule this match. Remember, at his lowest ebb, he was 4-0 down. Now, though, it is 4-3. Suke very much back in this. Now, today we had 144 matches scheduled. We've got three left on. Yanni Sikkanen and Nicholas Doer. They're Hill Hill, 7-7. Eric Kohler. 7-3 up on Vincent Gomez and, of course, the one we're watching here on table one. Ralph Suke, 4-3 down to Veronica Ivanovskaya. Actually, now just two matches in progress, Carl. I can tell you, Emil... Gangflot of Norway beat Karl Kanadeberg of Estonia, 8-7. And in the other match just completed, Jani Sikkanen, he won a hill-hill battle with Nicholas Doer. In goes the one. But again, nothing... Appetizing is the No, he can't cut this in the side, can he? So, got a bit of thinking to do here as Ralph. But if he can cut it in, it's so thin. No, it looks impossible from that angle, anyway. And where do you push to? We started the day ten and a half hours ago and you get the impression there's plenty of pool left in this match before we can finally close the book on day two. Well, looks like Veronica's fell asleep there. I think someone needs to give her a nudge. Best I ever saw and a snooker tournament. This is years ago. It was Dean Reynolds against Tony Chappell, England against Wales. And Reynolds was a slow player himself, but he objected to the fact that he thought Chappell was also. And he was sitting in his chair there, reading a, a copy of the Daily Telegraph <laughs> while, while his opponent was at the table. And back then, the Daily Telegraph was a very big broadsheet newspaper. It was a, a comical sight, but not exactly respectful. 
Love it. Absolutely love it. Safety's gone wrong there. I think she was trying to roll the cue ball up behind the five. Now what does Ralph play? Well, that's passed the initiative back to Veronica now because he's not got the hook. Now she can just roll this two ball thin over towards the five ball area, the purple five. She's got to try and get the cue ball behind the three ball. This is a big chance now. Oh, that's a little bit too hard unless the nine ball has come to play. Has she got the full ball hook? There may be a slight edge. Difficult to see from here. Well, in the end, it was a good hit. We had to wait a while for it, but it was a good hit. Yeah, in fairness, that was worth the wait. That was a, a lot of hazards out there, and he's avoided them all. She can pop this ball, but the cue ball is going to be crashing into the red three, and you're never sure where they're going to finish. If she can hit the blue totally full yes she'd be better playing a little stop shot and send the two up table that would be a smart shot I feel yeah I like that shot just put the pressure back over to Ralph purely because you never know where the cue ball and that three would go after potting the two so that's a smart shot and then there was one this one no other matches now in play, Eric Kohler has defeated Vincent Gomez over on table four. 8-3. So you can see all of the other tables are now lying idle until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. The only table in play is the one we're concentrating on. Yeah, I'll be pleased with that. That's okay.
Oh, that was a very tidy pot indeed. Now, does the three pass the nine? From the overhead angle there, Phil, it looks like it may just do. All depends on how much of the pocket Veronica has got. Cue ball's going a little near the side, needs to hold up. That was quite deceptive, actually, because it looked borderline, and in fact it was quite a comfortable entrance to the pocket in the end. Well, 5-3 beckoning here. All because on that blue two, she made a smart decision. She played the hook. She didn't go for the pot, even though the pot was on. And that is what has given her this chance in this rack. Oh, she's lost the cue ball a little bit. She'd like to have been a wee bit straighter. She should be okay. She's a good potter. But she's got to be feeling the heat a little bit. I remember last year at the World Nine Ball Championship on TV, she had a, a notable win, and we interviewed her afterwards, and she was saying that she'd put in so much concentration to the match, she had developed something of a headache. Well, this is the, the kind of match that will give you a headache. It really is one of those where you have to concentrate, not just 100%, 200%. And that was a good comeback for her. She was losing her thread somewhat after... Defeat in three consecutive racks. The rot is stopped. Veronica Ivanovskaya leads Ralph Suke 5-3. Yeah, at least we don't have to wait for the, the racker of the balls, the referee, to come from the other table because all the other tables are finished. Of course, this is not a late finish by anyone's stretch. It's 20-9 local time. You must have been involved in some really late finishes, Cole, or more accurately, some really early morning finishes. Phil, I'm a fast player. What, what are you getting at there? No, I'm thinking that matches that you were involved in started late. Only when I played against Ralph. <laughs> no, I've been, I've been the last one on the table many a times. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. You've just got to sit there and forget what's going on. Forget who's watching. Forget there's no matches left. It'll feel a little different out there as well. Usually there's a lot more noise. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. That is not good. It was too weak. And what a time to hit your worst break of the tournament. The quickest rack Ralph he's ever going to have in his life. Look at this one again. She was unlucky, actually, when I had another look. The one ball just hit the top jaw. Wow. Yes, after so many really hard-fought racks, that one could not have been concluded much quicker. A 1-9 combination, he simply could not miss. And so Ralph Suke back within a rack. And Vanovskaya is now 5-4 in front. That's the kind of combination you would love for a big title, isn't it? One you could get over and have the luxury of absolute knowledge that you're going to knock in. Yeah, probably still find a way to miss it, though. Talking about late finishes, the, the latest ever in snooker, 4.35 a.m. That was Peter Ebden, Joe Johnson in the International Open a few years ago at Swindon. In fairness to them, there was a a mess up with the tables there weren't enough tables to go around and they did start after midnight so it wasn't quite as bad as it seems the latest ever finish at the crucible in the world championship was 10 to 4 terry griffiths and cliff thorburn and that was the match in which much earlier thorburn from canada had made the first ever 147 at the crucible madness springs to mind madness nine balls moving nine balls moving
was a good pot, wasn't it? It was thin. And just look at the balls now, Phil. These are just all sat there begging. Yeah, he's not been level since nil-nil. That was a harder shot on the two than it looked. They were a lot thinner when you stood behind them. Okay, Carl, at the end of this rack, I'm going to pose a question for you. I'll give you pre-warning what the question is. You think about this. In your opinion, what's the best shot we've seen today? I'll leave you to think about that and give me your answer at the end of the rack. I'm trying to think who I've watched. <laughs> I'm struggling with that one. The best shot I've seen today. Give it plenty of thought. I'm absolutely convinced I know my choice. Again, Suke choosing to stick on the extension. And to play with a, a very lengthy cue as a consequence of that. Ivanovskaya seeing her once mighty lead eroded. In fact, seeing it disappear. what was a race to eight at the start. Now effectively distilled down to, from here, a race to three. It is 5-5, five five. Suke on the comeback trail. So my personal favorite shot today, Carl, and I think one of the best I've seen, was the, the thin two ball that Joshua Filler knocked in under immense pressure in the deciding rack against Rafael Valla. Oh, yeah, I mean, I 100% agree. I thought you meant what we commentated on. I forgot about that. I was thinking of what we've, what we've seen on this table. That's where I was getting thrown. Yeah, the two ball filler played at Hill Hill, especially from being eight, four down, and it was packed over there. Everyone was like wanting Raphael to win, really. You know, Josh was getting his claps and everything, don't get me wrong, but there was all for Raphael over there, and what a two ball it really was. Yeah, it's a, a funny old dynamic when you're playing someone and the vast majority of the audience want the other guy to win. It can inspire you, but it can intimidate as well. And clearly with Filler, it was the, the former, the inspiration. Now, can Suke go in front for the first time? Yes, he can. The golden break from Ralph Suke. We've seen one on this table from his fellow German superstar, Joshua Filler, that was in a match, though, that he absolutely monopolised. Here, the timing for Suke could not have been any better. Nudged into the centre pocket. He's loving that. And now he's in front at 6-5. So he's won two very rapid racks, hasn't he? One with a 1-9 a combination, the ninth, and now the 11th with a golden break. Yeah, what a change of events we've had here. We've we've kind of felt this was going to come now. Veronica's just kind of stepped off the pace a little bit. Game's got a little bit weaker, but the break she hit, she was a little bit unlucky. It was a little soft. Didn't quite hit it as powerful as she can, but she left the easy 1-9 combo, didn't she? And then, well, we've had a golden break. The nine does move a lot more in this style of break, though. And often it's the cue ball off the side rail. From a golden to a dry. 
in the blink of an eye. And that is this new break rule. I think it's down to a T. Just how much from one rack to the next things can be radically different. Remember the winner here will get to play Giannis Suto Camino in the next losers round tomorrow. Yeah, that's no good. I think she was just trying to drop in on the inside of it. It's going to be a safety shot. Now the pressure's switched back over. Veronica's now under the cosh. Ralph's going to have a go at this two ball up the long rail. Rail first, into the two, pot it in the top left pocket. Now it's Ralph's turn to get a little run of the ball this has finished absolutely horrible that little flick on the two so often when you're playing a, a containing shot if you suffer a double kiss it is a real negative not in this case No, absolutely no. You get the feeling this match could be slipping away from Ivanovskaya. Caught that far too thick, or should I say too thin for her intentions. Yeah, he's struggling to reach this. He's got the extension on the queue, but... Still can't reach it. Maybe I have to use the bridge. Well, already in this match, we've seen a reluctance for Suke to do that, haven't we? Marcel Eckhart, the German referee. He's sitting in the front row, keeping an eye on things. Yeah, there he is. Always on duty, Marcel. So we finish here on Sunday, Carl.
Then on Monday, he drives to Firth, which is near Nuremberg, for the start of the European Masters Snooker, which begins on Tuesday. World ranking event, that. The second ranking tournament of the brand new season. Usually pool players are not too good with the bridge, so let's see if Ralph can pass this little test. I'm afraid he failed. Well, it just seemed as though the queue was making an awful noise as it went through the, the bridge as well. He clearly was not comfortable on that at all. Oh, it was a lunge, wasn't it? More than a strike. Yeah, you've got to be very loose with your hand that is holding the cue and he wasn't. <laughs> because of the, the silence out there and because of the lack of hubbub we've had all day and indeed yesterday, the music sounds a little louder, doesn't it? At the end of this match, one of them will be singing the blues. Well, he's definitely played the player there. He would not play that shot against one of the top eight players in the world because they banked this ball in and they'd shoot the the, perp, uh, the pink four, sorry, in the same pocket. Is Veronica going to have a go at this shot? She is. She is, and she's made it. So a slight error there from Ralph, chanting his arm a bit. Veronica's up to the challenge there, though. Do you think that was a case of underestimating? Yeah, I just think he didn't really fancy playing a more exotic safety, so... That's why he decided to just split the balls. Tough shot coming up, though. Just focus on the pot. she's missed it and she's left it Phil the writing is on the wall we've just sensed this haven't we yes and the the brown seven ball not even close enough to the cue ball to provide any kind of help in that regard no hindrance not hampered I'll tell you what, though, regardless of what the eventual outcome is going to be, this has been a tough assignment for Ralph Suke. For the first time in the match, Ralph Suke has room for manoeuvre. He's arrived on the hill at 7-5, but I'll tell you what, the way things have gone, he will not be falling victim to complacency. 
He needs one rack to advance. Veronica Ivanovskaya needs the last three to knock out the Kaiser. Oh, Carl, what a day it's been. We started out with Tony Drago winning a, a lightning fast contest this morning. And then we end up with a, a match of a, a totally different complexion. From one extreme to the other. But it's the Kaiser, the legend, the man who's seen it all, done it all, got the T-shirt. So he's managed to turn this 4-0 deficit around. He was under pressure, really was. Let's not forget the loser of this match is out. This is loser's round action, race to eight. Kaiser to break, leading seven, Rex to five. Been one of those matches for him when he's broken off and has spotted a ball, apart from the golden break, of course, in the 11th rack. But generally speaking, there's always been one ball in the way. Ralph played the push. Does Veronica like anything here? She does. She's queuing up. She's going to play the shot. It's been really intense, this match, from first ball, presumably to last. And Suke taking no chances whatsoever. Characteristically. Yeah, I'm not 100% certain of the shot he was attempting there. But he has been a bit fortunate. The nine ball looks like it's blocked both sides of the two ball. Decent kick shot though, purposely playing the cue ball dead. 
on that back rail. Tried a sneaky bank, didn't he? Past the five, but it was obviously tight. So he's got away with that one. Where the balls are, you get the impression whoever pots the two will be an overwhelming favourite. Playing with fire there. Yeah, she tried a bank, but a two-way bank, knowing enough she misses it. Maybe it'll find that top rail. Can Ralph play a bank shot all the way down table? Maybe. Well, another flick there on the nine. Seems to have got Veronica in a spot with bother. I don't think she can cut this two ball in. Well, she can in the left, but obviously that's ridiculous. Yes, and at least Suke's got distance as well, so... Hmm. Smart shot, just leave a bit of distance. Don't just sell out, don't just give Ralph the match.
thought was there. The execution, not quite. The cue ball just floating on marginally too far from Suke's perspective, that is. Yeah, maybe. Does she have a bank on into the corner? Looks on. No, it's a safety shot, but she was trying to get the two on the bottom rail, I believe. She did, she didn't want to leave it over the pocket, and I think if Ralph can reach this, I think it's an easy jump shot. And that looks like he can. So he's going to go and get his jump cue. So, Cole, where does he sit in the pantheon of jump shot artists? Is he up there? I mean, I suppose you wouldn't put him in let's say the top three or four jump shot players but he's not a bad jump shot player do you know what i mean it's it's i suppose it's a difficult one to judge but there's just there's players who seem to you know constantly pot the ball from a jump shot he's adequate certainly yeah without a doubt but maybe he feels like he can't reach this kicking one rail off the side might be okay can you get the cue ball behind that pink?